sound with your mouth. Clean this all up because it's dirty. All right, we've got some exciting stuff going on this weekend. Oh, what do we got going on, Matt? Oh, we are going to finally be dropping my transmission in the Frankenstein Civic. And the plan is to install my Fidanza lightweight flywheel and my new clutch and... And if we get to it, some LSD. The wave track is going in this weekend, hopefully. So pretty much drop yeah. the trans, put the new flywheel and clutch on, and split the transmission and put this LSD in, put it all back in. That's the plan, can't be that hard, can mm -hmm. it? Well, we'll see, this, uh, the trans never been split from the block since we've had it, since the swap's been done. Uh, so hopefully it goes smoothly. Um, if you haven't seen the videos up until now, make sure you check above. I'm gonna put a card up top there and you can check up on the, the swap there. But uh, yeah, let's just get into this. Yeah, let's hit it. So this is the end of this evening. We've been at it for a few hours now, just uh, taking apart the basic stuff. We've got the axles out now. Um, we're starting to loosen off the bolts for the trans motor mounts. Yeah, simple yeah. things. All the electrical connectors from the top and the shift linkage cables are out. And so, I mean, we got a good head start for tomorrow because we got a lot of time tomorrow to yep. work on this thing. And so um, I think the uh, in installation of the LSD is looking pretty good right now. So far, well, so good. Time for it. We'll see how things go tomorrow, but uh, we'll catch it back up in the morning. The next day. All right, so uh, day two now. Uh, it's early in the morning. Uh, we've been at it for about an hour now, and we got the trans out. It's uh, dropped to the ground. And uh, yeah, next step is getting the clutch and flywheel, pressure plate, all that stuff off of there. Yeah, pretty much. So we're just going to get to it now. Status update. All right, so uh, currently we have the rear main seal finished on the motor. We figure since we have everything out anyway, it's worth doing and it looks like it was leaking anyway, so it was a good thing to do. Um, now we are getting everything ready to install the clutch and flywheel. So if you come over here, I had purchased an XTD clutch and flywheel stage two kit, uh, which I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on, but I was planning on risking it anyway and seeing how it performed. Um, and then if you remember, we picked up that Prelude SRV last spring, I think it was. And along with that car came a lot of extras, which included an Exidy clutch as well as a Fidanza flywheel. So it's a lightweight flywheel. Brace yourself. Look at that. All aluminum. Beautiful. So what we're going to do, uh, because this is the factory one on this side, uh, the XTD was advertised as a lightweight flywheel as well, and then the Fidanza is also a lightweight. So we're going to weigh all of them and see what the differences are, and uh, see how lightweight the XTD actually is. So number one, the OEM flywheel. 
So. Stock flywheel is about just under 19 pounds. Yeah, 18 and a half. Man, I'm shaking. <laughs> She's a heavy one. Scrawny white boy. Uh, the XTD, I remember when I purchased it, they advertised it was a 10 pound flywheel. And I believe it's heavier than that. It feels heavier. Uh, it's yeah, about 11. 11 just and a, over 11. Yeah. Yep. It's 11 pounds. We'll see 11 to be fair. And then we got the Fidanza, which I am not sure what it's advertised at. But it feels a heck of a lot lighter than that XTD. And it comes in at a hefty eight and a half. I'd say eight and a half pounds. That's insane. That is so light. So stock being eighteen and a half, you're losing ten pounds. It's less than half the weight of the OEM flywheel, and about three pounds lighter than the uh, XTD. Yeah. So I don't know what I'm going to do at this point. If I'm going to keep the XTD as a backup just in case. Or if I'm just going to sell it and then I can buy some more important uh, turbo parts maybe. So something we noticed on the factory flywheel, I don't know if this is normal or not. Um, but there is no bearing on here. So if you guys comment below and let us know if that's something that you've noticed. Like this is from a 94 Honda Prelude. Me and Tim, we've never seen anything like that before. I guess it's a factory thing. but mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, both the aftermarkets, they have... There's a bearing on bearing. this guy, a bearing on and this bearing. guy. We did the Supra, that's an 89. Mm -hmm. That has a bearing that on it. has a bearing. So. And this, um, this diameter is the same as this with bearing. So, I mean, the um, input shaft for the transmission, it fit in there just fine. Yeah. Weird. It's weird for us, but I guess it's normal. Um, but yeah, I guess next step is throwing that Fidanza on there. We'll see where we're at, but I think we're going to have time to rip that trans apart and throw that uh, wave track LSD in there. Limited slip, man. Stoked. All right, so what's nice about this flywheel is that it's fully serviceable. So as you can see the contact plate here, it's removable. So as it wears down, I don't have to replace the whole flywheel. I can just buy this as a separate unit and it's a lot cheaper to do it that way. Um, and then I just replace that. So that's interesting. Yeah. Kind of exciting. I like it. Let's get this in the car. All right, so clutch and flywheel is installed. Everything's done there, everything's torqued. And now we got the transmission on the ground. We're going to attempt to crack it open. We have never cracked open a trans like this before. And we're going to try installing a wave track limited slip differential. So we're gonna try and succeed, Matt. I'm a little nervous because I've never done it before, but uh, I think we can figure it out. Uh, we've figured out all sorts of things before. We can do this. Oh, 
All right, so we got uh, the ring gear torqued onto the wave track, so it is yeah. ready to go. How we achieved that is we uh, had to stick it into the vise. That was the only way we could get it to stay put enough that we could get it torqued. And our torque wrench doesn't actually work in reverse because they're reverse threads. Um, so we just kind of had to guess where 74 foot pounds was, but it feels like it's good and tight. So that's about the best we can do. I mean, good enough. It's, uh, I, I know it's not the right way to do it, but it's, it's all we can do today. We don't have a torque wrench that torques in reverse. So, I mean, it's tighter than 74. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. So she ain't coming loose. That's the, yeah. and that's the OEM recommendation. Yeah. And so I'm be thinking because this is more of a performance application that going a little higher than 74 is probably fine. Yeah. And we used a thread lock on there as well. So I think we're good. We shouldn't have any worries with it coming undone. So what's uh, next, man? Now we are going to get to work on this grotty transmission. Yeah, so there's a little bit of uh, gunk kind of built up. You can see it making its way down there. So we're going to clean that up. And the magnet as well, right? So this is what catches all the metal shavings. That's got a little bit of residue on it. So we're going to clean that up. Uh, just get all that grossness out of there. And then uh, we're going to get this all put back together. Other than that, though, this the whole transmission and the entire gear sets and every, all the synchros, they look great. Yeah. Everything is in good condition, so that's it's really good. So we're just trying to get a little bit of oil squirted all over this thing. It isn't the lightest thing I've ever held. Nice. So I think that's in. Yeah. This entire unit, which is still in one piece, nice and easy to install. Pretty much have the um, the two shafts and then the three like, and then that thing. So the rear main seal was leaking a bit, and uh, just like in my Acura TL. So gonna clean that up some brake clean, and then go ahead and install a new throwout bearing. Get this all cleaned up and greased up. Grease up the input shaft spline, and then she's ready to go back into the car. All right, so it's the end of the day today. So at this point, uh, we got the transmission back in the car, but uh, yeah. I gotta head home. Yeah, that's yeah. that's it for me for this weekend. So I think Matt will pick up with the rest of it uh, on his own time. Yeah, really, uh, well, we got the last motor mount bolted up. It was, uh, it was a pain. It took us about two hours to get yeah, that one in. Just that one mount, like, I mean. Yeah, that's crazy. eBay mounts, right? So I know we had trouble when we swapped the motor the first time and yeah, now we're reliving all that again. So I think in the future, I'm gonna be saving up for some decent mounts that actually line up properly. Yeah, I think that'll um, save us a lot of headache and a lot of time in the will. future. Because we'll be pulling this mo motor a lot more. Well, we know for sure it's gonna be getting boost. So we're gonna be pulling the motor for that. I wanna redo the engine bay at some point. So it's gonna happen regardless. So definitely on the list. Um, but yeah, we got a lot accomplished today. Yeah, I can't wait, Matt. This is this car is gonna rip at the track. Oh, it's gonna be crazy with that LSD wait. in it. This once, is this is exciting times, Matt. Once the snow's melted and we can take it out for the first time, it's mm -hmm. gonna be so good. It's gonna be mint, man. Yeah, mint enough. Anyway, well, we'll uh, see you next time, Tim. Thanks. Oh, that was right terrible. <laughs> oh, I couldn't even finish it. <laughs> it was the greatest thing. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> I think I watched like 40 seconds of it. I'm like, I can't. It's the same thing over and over. With a different filter on. Yeah, different filter, but the same side of the car and same oh, wheel. Good.